Alright, so we're finally here to Ready Player One, and I thought, as a whole, like, Ready Player One was fine. I think that as a Spielberg movie, I think it's a little lacking, but it's still pretty good. Like, it's got its Spielberg flavor to it, but to me, I felt like it didn't have the heart that some of the older Spielberg movies had. Like, it's not like this is fake, like, artificial in which how... The film, the film doesn't feel artificial or fake, it just doesn't feel like the same level that a lot of Spielberg's giant library of movies that he has done are. Like, it doesn't feel like it has as much of an emotional pull, but I wonder if that's the point of the movie in which this, it's, I haven't read the book, and I don't know if the book is any different, but maybe the book is like this, where it is not fully from a strong emotional standpoint, it's just from characters that are supposed to be everyday characters, so they don't have as much, like, to them, I guess. And I think that's the way I could justify it, in which it doesn't feel like it's as strong in terms of sincerity, like the other Spielberg films, but it's a good one. I think it's fine. Um... Spielberg to me is always he's had a he's had a, a giant amount of great movies and he had some misses too but he's never been to where he has ever like gone down that road and never returned because I felt like he has always found something after something that was considered lackluster and gone back to do something better so it also makes sense that Steven Spielberg has done so many movies so it's like how much how can you redo the same thing over and over again? I feel like he was thinking that making this movie. Um, but the movie itself, I think, is fine. Like I said, I haven't read the book. I don't know if it's very accurate to the book. I hear it's probably not. But without it being as sincere as some of his other movies, I think that these characters are still likable. I just feel like they don't have much depth to them. But like I said, that might be the point. Like, um, Wade Watts' character, Ty Sheridan's... Uh, character in the movie they like it feels like he doesn't have much of an emotional like you get his play you get why he is like why he is sad why he is wanting to be something else um than what he is living in the in this basically the slums of 2045 but they're called the stacks where it's like houses on top of houses and it's it's a really cool design too that how they did that but but he's pretty just basic, and it's not the actor's fault, it just, I felt like they didn't, he didn't have much to him besides the fact that, oh, he's an everyday kid, but that might just be the point, too. Um, and Artemis, Olivia Cook's character, I liked her a lot. Um, I honestly think I liked her more than Ty Sheridan, but it's not, I'm not disservicing Ty Sheridan, I think he's fine, but, like, I feel like... Olivia Cook's character got more of a reasoning, like, because it's about Wade Watts finding this girl, Artemis, um, in, like, the first part of the movie, and he, you see, like, her more, and her having a bigger personality, and I, and it's maybe just because of Olivia Cook, but I thought that she was really good, and she had the same kind of issue, where she wasn't completely, like, she didn't have that much to her, but I thought that her performance was good. And I thought that they both together were fine. And I think actually Ty Sheridan was better as the virtual character because I felt like he was... I think it's because he is more the virtual character than the real character. That's probably why I think he... He bothered me as the real, real world character because he just didn't have that much to him. But now that I'm thinking about it, whenever he goes into the virtual world, he... Uh, in the Oasis, he actually has more to him. So I'm not trying to disservice that actor at all. Like, he's he's good. He's good in the movie. It's just, I felt like at first, in the, in the real world, he was kind of just bland. But in the virtual world, now I'm realizing, oh, he's he was kind of more interesting than, than I give him credit for. Um, but I like the two main leans. I thought they were good. I thought that they had fine performances. I love Olivia Cook. I think she's I just saw Thoroughbred, so I'm glad I saw two for two. Last week I saw Thoroughbreds, and this week I saw this. That's awesome. Um, and Ben Mendelsohn, who's the villain of the movie, is cool. He, uh, he's he got this performance where it's not super over the top. Um, 
not like Rogue One where it's like he's hefty, like he's got a hefty role in that movie where he just is really kind of over the top but in a fun way in Rogue One. But in this one he's over the top but very subtly, like the way his character is just, like he's this quiet, demanding boss man. But I, I thought he did good. I thought he was fine, too, in the movie. Um, and all the other characters are basically just, like, they're all good, but they're they're not really... This is, the, this is one of the things I think Spielberg does best in a lot of other movies, is side characters can be more interesting. And these ones I felt like didn't get as much screen time, besides the main two characters and the villain. I felt like the other characters didn't get as much screen time in the real world. Like, you get them in the virtual world, but whenever you get them in the real world, they're just kind of there. And they got funny lines, but it's like, I felt like Spielberg did better in a lot of other movies where the side characters were more developed or more entertaining. And these those actors who played these side characters in this movie did fine. They were good. But I just felt like they did it better in other Spielberg movies. But that's not saying this ba it's bad by any means at all. I think it's still good. And... I thought that the story itself is interesting. I like how it's like this video game plot where you're trying, because in the virtual world you're trying to find three keys. Um, and I liked how it's just kind of an interesting story even though it's like a video game story. It's been done before and it's a, it is a video game type of story. But I liked, I liked how they pursued all that and I liked all these weird and wacky places they went to. In the Oasis, there's one mo there's one scene in the movie that is an absolute standout. Like it goes on for a while, and it and I loved it the whole time it was on screen. But there is a scene where these characters go into a movie, and I love this movie so much, and it is fantastic. Just where they go in this movie, and this is an older movie and I'm not going to say what it is you gotta see it to see what I'm talking about but there's an older movie they go into and literally like it is the one of the most beautiful looking like they replicated everything perfectly from this movie that they w went into and it is hilarious because they have a lot of reactions to characters who haven't seen this movie because it's an older movie but I wish I could just say it, but I want you to see it for yourself. Like, see see this movie because of that scene alone for me. I think that is one of the best, like, hilarious scenes I've seen in a while. Um, and the thing about this movie is it's reliant on pop culture and references from, like, the late 70s, early 80s and on. But mostly it's just the 80s. There's some that are, like, recent. Like, I saw, like, Overwatch or God of War characters. But and Warcraft characters, but it's very much 1980s, some 70s, like, you see, like, all of these different pop culture icons, like, especially since I'm a big horror fan, I like that you saw Chucky and Freddy and Jason and, uh, Beetlejuice, and there were other things, like, just random, like, you could, there are probably, like, a thousand of these random characters just embedded in pop culture that they had the rights to, I think, not everything, because they didn't have Disney or Star Wars. They mentioned the Millennium Falcon, but they didn't show any Star Wars stuff, which makes sense, because Star Wars is owned by Disney and Marvel. They had some DC, though, in it, but but all of these characters are pretty much just, just the background characters, and that makes sense that they are. I think that it works a little better whenever they're not just thrown front and center, because I feel like that's cheap. Like, there are moments where it's fun, where, like, you see a character pop up that, like, you like. Like, I love horror movies, and I love whenever there's a scene where they're fighting in this area of the Oasis in a vehicle, and these people are giving them weapons, and you hear somebody say, take this little guy, and then you see from their point of view, it's Chucky, and he's throwing a knife at him, and, like, they throw him out, like, get him out of here. Like, that that was genuinely awesome, because I, I love that character. Um... But I like that it didn't overstay its welcome. I like that it was literally just a second and then he was gone. Just like Freddy and Jason or Batman or any of these other things. Like the DeLorean. Like all these pop culture references. I cannot mention every single one. But but I really thought that it was fun. And there were some times with these pop culture references where I was just like, okay, you don't have to incorporate it into the dialogue and say, oh, this is this, this is this. Like, I felt like you, like, 
it made sense in some things, like whenever they went into that movie, um, it made sense in how it didn't just say, reference it for the sake of referencing it. They went in there and did all these things because of an objective they had to accomplish. And I like whenever it's like that, but whenever it's references like where they just mention in the dialogue for no reason and doesn't relate to anything else, that's when it kind of bugs me. It's just like, okay. But they did a pretty good job for the most part connecting all these references if they talked about them in dialogue to stuff like like about the guy who created the Oasis played by Mark Rylance they had some good details in using these references but using them in oh this is from his childhood or this is his favorite movie his favorite song his favorite game like I liked whenever they did that connecting it that way instead of just saying something pop culture-y but not relating it to the plot at all and for the most part they do a fine job at connecting them to this character who created the Oasis his story so overall it's a it's a little complaint but it's not too oh it's not too bad but it's a tiny complaint that gets me a little bit just pop culture references being referenced but also I feel like I'm being a complete hypocrite because there were things I loved about this movie these references for things I loved and this the book I hear is just so reliant on it, it makes sense. It makes sense in this world. It makes sense that these people are overcome with nostalgia and overcome with being in a virtual world instead of being in a crappy real world, which is in 2045 where everybody's crammed up in stacks. And I think that it does make sense in the logic of the movie. But but overall, I think Ready Player One was really, really fun. I'd say... It doesn't have as strong, like I said, it didn't have as much of a heart as, say, older Spielberg movies. But this is still a worthy Spielberg movie. Like, it has really fun characters. They're fun and interesting, but I feel like they lack a little in terms of the other ones, other movies of his. But I think that these characters are likable. They're entertaining. The movie is entertaining. It's got some standout stuff for me as a fan of these some of these pop culture things. And there are billions of things that you can... If you get the movie after it, whenever it comes out, I might do that just to pause it and watch all of these cameos in the background of every little thing. Um, but overall, I thought that, like I said, it had likable characters. It was an interesting story. It uh, it had one other thing that I do need to mention that did bother me. Um, the Mark, Mark Rylance, who's a good actor, um, plays the guy who created the Oasis, um, Halliday. And he, whenever, whenever he's not, like, in the Oasis, when he's in the real world, he took me out of the movie so much because the way this guy talks as this character and the way he's got this long hair, he literally sounds like Garth from Wayne's World. And every time I, I heard him speak, I was like, why? Like, it, sound, it took me out of the movie so much that he sounded just like... Garth. Like, I was like, man, this this really... And no, some people might not think that way, but to me, I was like, man, this really took me out of the movie. Um, and that was a complaint that I was like, oh, this, this does bother me a little bit. But overall, the movie, besides that, and besides some of the, the dialogue with pop culture, I'm just like, you don't have to do that um, with the references. But it makes sense in this world. Overall, I think that the movie is fine. It's a fine good solid Spielberg movie it's definitely not one of his best but I think it is a pretty worthy Spielberg movie just lower on his filmography for me